All right, welcome back. So last time we looked at how to calculate compound interest for a deposit in an account over a certain period of time. But in most cases, bank accounts are a bit busier than just depositing a chunk of cash and letting it sit for a while, right? We oftentimes take money out, we put more money in, which would be deposits and withdrawals, right? And so what do we do if we wanna calculate accumulated interest while we're also putting more money in and taking more money out of an account. And so we are interested in knowing if I put $100 into an account and then let's say I put another 100 in in a year and then I take out $50 two years from now, what is in my account at the end of that period of time that I'm interested in if I have a particular interest rate. Let's just say it was 3%. Doesn't matter for this, I'm not gonna calculate anything, but that's the question we're asking here is, if I start with an amount and then I either add some in or I take some out, what am I gonna have at the end if I'm still accumulating interest? And so to calculate that accumulated amount, we have to build upon the concept that we established in the first lesson. And so in order to do that, we're gonna take a look at an example and that's going to help us understand this process. So we've got our example here and the way we're gonna go about this is I'm going to show you the long way of doing it, then we're going to do the short way and then I'm gonna show you why the short way is the same as the long way. And so the point of this is to show you the best way to do it, which is the short way, and then show you why it works and be at peace knowing that it is doing the correct calculations. And we're not just given a way to do it and you just have to believe that it works. We actually wanna see how it works. So we got our example here. Every year, Tom's account earns interest at a compound rate of 2%. On the 1st of January in 2017, Tom deposits $400. On the 1st of January in 2019, he withdraws $100. And on the 1st of January in 2021, he deposits $200 more. What is his balance on the 1st of January in 2022? Now, the first thing I always do with these problems, and you'll see I already have it drawn here, is draw a timeline. A timeline is going to help you really organize each transaction and figure out what's happening so that you know what value you're looking for and what values you have. So let's start at the very beginning of our timeline with the first thing that Tom does. In this case, he deposits $400 in 2017. So we're gonna write 2017 and he deposits $400. And then in 2019, he withdraws $100. So then our next mark on the timeline is 2019, and he withdraws $100. So I'm gonna write minus 100 because he's taking that money out of his account. Then in 2021, which is our next mark on the timeline, he deposits 200. So I'm gonna put plus 200 because now he's adding 200 more into his account. And then our question is, how much is in his balance in 2022? So then we'll, add this and we'll put a little question mark so that we know that's the value we are looking for. And then the other thing that we are given is the interest rate. We know he has a compound interest rate for his account of 2%. So I'll write that up here. We have I equals 2%, which means our interest rate is 0 0.02 if we convert it to a decimal. Okay, so then how do we go about calculating this? Well, we're gonna use that equation that we came up with in lesson one on how to calculate compound interest for a deposit, and we're gonna use that for each one of these transactions. So if we recall, we have the future value equals some deposit C times one plus the interest rate in decimal format to the amount of periods we are compounding for, which in this case is years. And so we wanna find that future value. So we're gonna do each transaction individually and that's gonna be our long way. And then I will show you the short way that makes it a whole lot easier. But the first thing we wanna do is see how many years are between each transaction. So that's gonna help us be able to calculate our values along the way. So we see that between 2017 and 2019, we're gonna have two years. Between 2019 and 2021, we also have two years. And between 2021 and 2022, we have one year. So let's do our first transaction. In 2017, we have a deposit of $400. And then we're going to compound this $400 for a certain period of time, which is going to be one plus the interest rate, which is 0.02. And we are going to compound it for these two years right here. It's going to be all of 2017 and all of 2018. So we'll write two. And that is going to be equal to 416 and 16 cents. So then to move on and do our next calculation, we have to first take our withdrawal out. So we got to subtract $100 from this amount and we're left to $316 and 16 cents. Now we're ready to compound it again. Now we can take it from this point all the way to this point. 
So we've got $316.16, and we're going to compound that, multiply it by 1.02 for another two years. So we'll write two, and we will calculate that, and that's going to give us $328.93. Now, the next thing that we do in our timeline is we put in 200 more dollars. Tom deposited 200 more dollars, so we have to add that 200, and we'll get $528.93. So now we're almost done. We have our amount at the beginning of 2021. We just now have to compound it for one more year to find our amount at the beginning of 2022. So we take this $528.93 and we compound it for one more year. And we finally get our answer of $539.51. So that would be our answer. So we can now fill this in, and we have $539.51 at the end of 2022. So that's the long way to do it. It's very long, it's kind of tedious, but thankfully there is a shorter way to do it. And so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I cleaned things up a bit, and I kept the information I believe was most important to keep on the screen. And now we're going to do our short way. And once we see the short way, you might be a little confused and think, well, that doesn't seem like it should get the same answer, but it does. So you might be a little confused, but then we're going to show you how the long way is the same as the short way. So let's do this short and easy way that is the most important takeaway from this video. So we'll start by finding the future value. And again, we're going to be looking for this value, which is what we found from our long way. And we'll start with this $400 deposit. And the way we're going to go about this short way is we're going to take into account the entire timeline all at once, rather than in sections like we did before. So how long is this $400 in my account? Well, it's going to be in for 2 plus 2 plus 1 years. From 2017 to 2022 is a total of 5 years, so that's how long we're going to compound it for. We're going to multiply it by that 1 plus the interest rate to the 5th power. For all 5 years, we're going to take into account. Then we're going to work on our next transaction. So we'll have to subtract our $100 withdrawal in 2019, and then we want to look to see how long that withdrawal is on our timeline. How much time passes from when we make the withdrawal to what we're interested in knowing. And that's going to be three years, right? Two plus one. So we would then multiply this by 1.02 to the third power. We're going to compound that withdrawal for three years. Then we're going to add our next transaction, which is a deposit of $200. And in this case, this $200 is only part of the timeline for one year. So we were going to compound that once. So now if we were to plug this into our calculator, we would actually get the same amount of money. This would also be $539.51, which is the same as what we found before. So how does that work? Why is this the same as that really long way that we did, where we did each transaction individually? How come we can do all of them at once? Well, I'm going to show you algebraically why that is. So we're going to take this equation over, and we're going to do some work once again with this problem and see what exactly is going on. Okay, so I've brought over that short way of doing this problem. I've got it right up here. This is what we're working towards. And I've also brought over our timeline to help us kind of remember what we did for that long way. So if you recall, we started by finding the future value with our deposit, and we brought it forward, or we compounded it, for two years from 2017 to 2019. So we did 1.02, so 1 plus the interest rate squared. And that gave us that $460.16. But then we subtracted our withdrawal. We subtracted that $100. And then we calculated that in our calculator, and we got $316.16. But instead of doing that, instead of plugging into our calculator, I'm going to keep that value as we continue on. So we're going to have this $400 compounded for two years minus 100 as one quantity. And remember, that's going to be our $316. So the next thing we did with that amount was we compounded that for another two years. So we'll take this whole quantity, which is that 316 and 16 cents, and compound it for two more years. Then let's simplify this a little bit. So we'll take our future value, and we're going to distribute this to each part of this quantity. So that means we're going to have 400 times 1.02 to the fourth power. And that's because we have the power of two and two for the same quantity, so we can combine those to the fourth power. Minus 100 
times 1.02 squared. Now, this value right here is now equal to the amount in our account at the end of 2020, right before we make this deposit of $200. But remember, we do make that deposit of $200, so then we have to add that $200 back in. So I'm going to get rid of this parenthesis, and then we can add our $200 and close it, and now that is the amount that we have at the beginning of 2021. So then this entire amount, which we have not calculated yet, we didn't plug it in our calculator, this whole thing is equal to the amount in the account up until this point. So now we have one more year to compound it. So then we'll multiply by 1.02 one more time. And this is to the first power because it's only one year that we have left to do. And then let's distribute this through each part of this quantity. So now we're going to have the future value and it's going to be equal to 400 times 1.02 to the fourth times this. So we're gonna have another 1.02, so we're gonna have 400 times 1.02 to the fifth power. Then we're going to multiply it by this term, and so we'll have negative 100 times 1.02 to the third power, and then we have to multiply it by this term, plus 200 times 1.02 to the first power. Whoa, hold on a minute, do you see that? Look at this, look at this, now look at this. They're the exact same. All of a sudden, our short way is the long way, and our long way is the short way. We just kept from calculating our numbers along the way and just kept them in their, in this form rather than just multiplying them and subtracting. We kept them this way until we got through all of our transactions, and now we see that it's the exact same as that short way. So if we just compound each individual transaction for the whole length that it's in the timeline, it's the same as doing them individually for each part of the timeline. So I hope that made sense. I hope you kind of see how those two are related. So now we can go ahead and use the short way all the time because we know it's always going to be right if we set up our timeline correctly. So let's test our skills now with this short method and do one more example. It'll be the last one for this lesson, but let's do this one here. We have Sarah deposits $1,000 today, deposits another $1,000 in two years, and in six years from today, she withdraws $500. How much is in her account at the end of eight years if her yearly compound rate is 1%? So let's first write that her interest rate is 1% which is equal to 0 0.01 in decimal form. And then let's draw our timeline. That's the first thing you always want to do besides writing down what your interest rate is when you start one of these problems. You got to draw a timeline. It's going to help you out so much. So we'll start right here at time equals zero. At the beginning of time or the beginning of this account, she deposits $1,000. So then we move on to our next transaction, which is in two years. So we make another mark t equals two, and she deposits another $1,000. We then continue our timeline to the next mark, which is in six years from today, so that would be time equals six, she withdraws $500, which would be minus 500. By the way, we should also draw a plus there so that we know that that is a deposit rather than a withdrawal. I like to do that to really keep it organized. So then we've got one more thing to look at here. We wanna know how much does she have at the end of eight years, so time equals eight. What is in her account? So we are looking for this value right here. So let's use our short method and let's calculate this. It should be actually pretty quick, which is the whole point of the short way of doing basic cash flows. So we'll start with our future value and it's going to be equal to our initial deposit multiplied by one plus the interest rate, which is 0.01. And then we want to compound that for the entirety of this timeline for all the years that we're interested in, which is eight. So we'll put an eight there. And then we're going to add our next deposit, and then we're going to compound it for the amount of years that it is in the timeline. So let's write our next 1,000 and 1.01. That's what this would actually end up being in here. So I'm gonna write 1.01 rather than one plus 0.01, okay? And then how long are we compounding this for? Well, we're starting at year two and we're going to year eight. So that would be six years from two to eight. Eight minus two would be six. So there's six. And then we're going to subtract our withdrawal right here. And this is at time equals six. So how many years is between time equals six and time equals eight? Two years. So then we would compound that for two years. And then if we plug this equation into our calculator, if we plug in 1,000 times this and plus 1,000 times this and minus 500 times this, we will get our answer that the future value is equal 
to 1,634 and 33 cents. And that would be our final answer, which we can put right up here now because that's how much is in the account at time equals eight. Okay, so that's how you use this short method of calculating basic cash flows. Hopefully that made sense on how we built upon our original equation. Remember we had the future value equals that initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the amount of time that we're interested in, right? To that power. And you can see we used that in each part of this cash flow. For each deposit, for each withdrawal, we did that. So hopefully that made sense and you're ready to maybe see some more examples. I would highly recommend you watch the example video that I'll have linked at the end as well as in our description because it's going to go over some more examples that might be a little bit more difficult but still use the short way that we learned here. So until then, I'll see you next time.